you doing? Is everything going okay? Woo! <laughs> it's me again, laughing. Don't even ask me what I'm laughing about, you know? But today, hey, it's no laughing matter. Today we are talking about hypertension. When I realized that there has been racial disparity on hypertension, that black people are four or five times more likely to get, you know, more susceptible to this thing. Her, I decided to take this thing seriously. You guys, man, we should take these things very seriously. You know, there's been very many studies that have been done, okay, like on African-American population in the U.S. that has concluded that we as black people are more susceptible, or they as black people, especially inner city, blacks living in the inner city, okay, those I think would be, you know, low to middle class black people. You know, we are more susceptible to uh, negative outcomes of high blood pressure. And it, you know, they ruled out every other thing. They ruled out diet, they ruled out awareness because they found all those things to be kind of similar in the population. Everybody's eating fast food, okay? So um, everybody's kind of exposed to the same kind of foods at work, yeah? We're all eating donuts. Um, in, in Africa also, our diets are also changing. The people who think that we have the money, you know, are also eating a lot of fast food and not cooking as much as we used to. So we are being affected also with high, hypertension in this country. And there was a study that was done in Buenos Aires that has found that now, in addition to the fact that we are already five times more susceptible to uh, blood pressure, that uh, the, <clears throat> the lockdowns, you know, the lockdowns in the, in, in the world, globally, basically, you know, the mandatory social isolation, okay, um, has increased emergency admissions of people 37 percent more of the one more have been found to have hypertension okay and that's probably because of the higher level of stress that people are experiencing due to lockdown and the fact that we are changing even our eating habits uh, there's been more drinking of alcohol uh, eating of high fatty foods sitting in front of the television not moving as much as we normally do you know maybe spending time worrying and stressing having financial problems and uh, even, you know, you see even marital discord and uh, difficulties with relationships. All of this is contributing to stress and it's changing our psychological makeup and, and increasing our tension, elevating tension within us. So, uh, some people also have decided that they're going to stop taking their medications because they're not even going to, to, to the hospital anymore to be checked. So maybe you have hyper, hypertension already you have that history of hypertension but you're not going to get checked so what happens of course then you start you know developing hypertensive serious emergency problems all right so i don't want to scare you <laughs> because that's not what i came for i didn't come here to scare you i came here because i love you as my mo on the go fans and because i have an interest and every day i do research on diseases I think maybe I should have been a doctor, man. There's so many doctors in my family. But I do research on diseases. I, I don't know why. I always like to know what's going on. Like when I was pregnant, I was always in the public health library. I wanted to understand what's going on with my body. In this particular time of um, COVID, I want to know what are the risk factors of mandatory isolation? What are they, you know? Yeah. What the, the research suggests is that black people tend to have an earlier onset of hypertension than other, other uh, people in the population okay it has an implication for treatment okay that's one the other thing is that we have an increased risk for very bad negative outcomes such as stroke and and uh, what, what do we say and 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 heart heart you know heart uh, what do you say heart damage damage to our hearts stroke damage to our brains you know we are just basically at higher risk of mortality and morbidity which means higher risk of death and illness long-term illness and what that means is that, you know, we as black people are aware that this is an issue. There's been a lot of studies, a few studies that are starting to identify linkages or associations between exposure to vitamin D3 and the sun, that is time in the sun and our ability to actually metabolize our bodies to efficiently work. I'm no doctor as you can see, yeah? But all I know is that um, we don't know. They don't really know what it is. And they haven't done enough studies. They need to do some more. And we as Africans need to actually commission these studies on high blood pressure. Because in every family we know that there's several people who have hypertension. 
you know, in our families. And so why is it that we're not doing the studies adequately on our own populations and relying on data and st from studies that are done on different populations from us blacks? Okay. So now what happened is that um, the American Health Association and the American College of Cardiologists um, redefined the, the threshold for people who will be diagnosed with hypertension from 140 uh, mm of mercury to um, over 90 mm of mercury to 130 mm of mercury um, over 80 mm of mercury. What, did, what that does is that by lowering that threshold, they increase the percentage of people in America that would be diagnosed as pre-hypertensive, hyper, stage one hypertensive, as, and so on. And what that did is that it increased, the, it, increased it by over 30%, okay, in America and by over 50 something percent in China because they did these studies in, in America and China to find out the impact of the change in 2017 of the national guidelines on hypertension. Now, we know that uh, the European Cardiovascular Association or the European you know, societies, they are still sticking with the 140 over 90. Okay, so in Kenya, we can imagine, for example, that because we are, uh, we used to be under the British and probably still following British form of education, most likely we're still following 140 over 90, but I'm not so sure. I think I'm going to talk to one of my epidemiologist friends to come and shed more light on this issue. According to uh, the literature, that despite the benefits of controlled elevated blood pressure readings, unfortunately, many black people don't benefit from that control. Even the people who are on medication, it's only a proportion of those who are on medication that actually get benefit from that medication. We're looking at a proportion of probably even 40% of the people who are on meds not being able to lower their blood pressure even with the medications. All right? And what that means is that we need to take this thing a bit more seriously, okay? Because there are several factors that can impact on our blood pressure, all right? One of them is non-pharmacological therapy. That means alternative therapy for, you know, high blood pressure. So maybe people are not taking medications, they're using alternative homeopathy and things like that, okay? There's dietary factors, maybe the salt intake that, you know, in our diets. Uh, and by the way, it's not just salt, it's also sugars, you know. It could also be uh, the treatment itself, okay? Maybe the treatment, the drugs are not interacting with our bodies the same as people from other races, okay? So um, there has been this movement on the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. It's called the DASH diet. The dietary approaches to stop hypertension emphasizes reduction of salt intake, sodium intake specifically, okay? and increase in uh, ve vegetable intake, lowering of maybe fats, fatty food, I mean, carbohydrates, you know, refined carbohydrates, okay, and increase in fats actually, you know. But um, on the other hand, um, what we know is that we are, as black people, they say that we are more salt sensitive. What that means is that um, we have more tendency to, we seem to benefit better from a different type of intervention when it comes to drugs, which involves, you know, um, diuretics more than other types of, you know, interventions. So I saw that also, I've seen that with a member of my family who when they took diuretics, it helped a lot to bring down their blood pressure. Um, my brother is a doctor, so I think I need to talk to him about that. Because right now my notes are scribbled, they're all over the place, okay? Like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just trying to understand the, the research so far, okay? So basically the hypertensive guidelines changed and with that what it did is that it brought um, the threshold down to 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, okay? Okay, to, and anything above that would require some sort of intervention. But on the other hand, to qualify for intervention, even if you are, for example, at 89, for example, to qualify for intervention, there are several things that you have to have. For example, you have to be 65 years old and above, all right, to qualify for medication, okay? If you are like at about between 80 and 89, diastolic pressure, 
okay you have to have pre-existing conditions that means you have to have a previous condition on your heart you have to have a, a chronic sort of sort of chronic disease you have to have diabetes okay and many and you have to be um, the target would be 130 and over 80 below so in other words it doesn't mean that automatically because your diastolic pressure is between 80 and 89 that you will qualify for treatment what they will do is that they will try to ask you to change your lifestyle and your diet so I think that's manageable we, we you know because we don't have to be to, sus to succumb to this fear messaging because this fear messaging um, is really what was being targeted by the reduction of the threshold according to some of the research that I found that they didn't really do enough um, studies on this because the decision to arrive at the 130 over 80 was made based on a cohort who did not necessarily represent the entire population for example the age is 50 and above think about Africa you know majority of the people in Africa are below the age of 50 okay so some of those study participants most of all the study participants had to have been hypertensive okay they had to have been over 50 and above etc so they don't represent the entire population but based on that they came up with these new guidelines that we should now be measuring hypertension in terms of lower thresholds but what we're saying is that um, that kind of tends to oversaturate us with too much worry okay there's even this thing that I came across which is called white coat hypertension ever heard of it ah, who wears a white coat anytime you walk into that room you just feel oh, I'm scared you know so they make you try to relax 15 minutes before they take a blood pressure reading but because you know of time concerns you know most doctors don't even have 15 minutes to spend with you they're supposed to give you at least 15 minutes to relax you know before they give you a blood pressure reading sometimes they don't even give it to you in some cases you know so what happens is that you can go in there because you're so scared you got this white coat hypertension you get a high, a high blood pressure reading and then immediately you get into treatment and what happens you end up getting over treated which is just as bad you know so actually what they try to encourage is that if you are between 80 and 89 diastolic okay or between uh, 130 and 140 systolic um, then they will encourage you to have a lifestyle change behavior change okay in terms of modifying your your diet and modifying your behavior okay because the idea is that um, we don't want to over you know overburden the body with side effects of antihypertension medication now I've said a lot of things but overall what I'm saying guys is that we need to measure our our blood pressure okay on a regular basis at least maybe once a month and if you have this blood pressure if you have a blood pressure monitor you could measure it when you're not feeling well for example yeah just check yourself and it's not very expensive it's something that you can invest in you can invest in this yeah it's something that's important to have around the house some it's probably the same price as a, a good quality blender for some of us who like to cook ladies okay have one around but it doesn't mean that you're always constantly you know checking your blood your your you know your your blood pressure also because this also can be a problem yeah so I hope that that helps you to understand a little bit about why it is important for us as black people African people to um, be aware about our situation with hypertension to reduce our alcohol intake to balance our sodium and potassium intake as much as possible so if you have a high salt diet make sure that you drink milk because it's high in magnesium and calcium and phosphorus uh, which are good for elasticity of your nervous system and it's also good for helping your blood to flow better and you know low that is low low uh, fat no fat milk or even yogurt uh, you also need to make sure that you are don't take the medications I wouldn't take the calcium I wouldn't take the calcium supplements unless I was over a certain age because you can get it from food you can get it from cabbage you can get it from greens from beans uh, many many good foods like those okay a few nuts and oils and you be careful of those nuts because I hear they gain weight and the way I like peanuts where huh? all right guys so but basically let's just watch ourselves exercise diet and do some research uncle Google is a great place but also make sure that when you're doing your research you're not just listening to YouTube you go in there and you research on the medical journals there are medical journals that I consulted several of them you know and tried to triangulate information but I'll be calling a friend of mine who's an epidemiologist to shed light on these issues and I'm going to grill him and ask him a couple of questions because I'm always curious to find out. 
Okay, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. I don't take it for granted that you spend time chatting with me or listening to me and my do -do 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 -do. yeah. Um, I hope I made some sense. For doctors out there, I apologize if I've made big mistakes. Please correct me. Nurses out there, you know, feel free to share your information, you know, because these are our bodies in the end, yeah? We know something about them, but the doctors don't. So let's also educate our doctors about our bodies, okay? Okay.